It is now my pleasure to introduce Jonathan Petherbridge, who is to be admitted as an honorary fellow of Rose Bruford College. Jonathan Petherbridge has been the creative director of London Bubble since 1989, before which he led repertory theatre companies in Lancaster, York and Mould. Many Rose Bruford performers, designers and technicians have been employed by the Bermondsey-based London Bubble and have contributed to the company's work, engaging new audiences both through participation and performance. The company works in a range of settings with a diversity of age groups. These include a drama-based initiative that supports the very young to communicate, speech bubbles, and an ongoing project for young adults who have missed out on continuing education or employment, bubble young theatre makers, and workshops which engage older people in their homes, creative homes. London Bubble is also renowned for touring the capital's green spaces with promenade theatre pieces, a form which Jonathan pioneered in Lancaster in 1986. He currently specialises in intergenerational work, bringing together people of all ages to research, develop and perform large-scale projects of local importance, which he describes as vernacular theatre. One of these pieces, Grandchildren of Hiroshima, is staged annually in the Japanese city by a cast of community performers, both young and old, to mark the deployment of the first atomic bomb and share a message of peace. Chair of Governors, I'm pleased to present Jonathan Petherbridge, who is to be admitted as an Honorary Fellow of Rose Bruford College. By virtue of the powers invested in me, I am delighted to admit Jonathan Petherbridge as an Honorary Fellow of Rose Bruford College. Thank you very much indeed. You lit a royal wedding. <laughs> um, so first of all, can I congratulate the students who have worked so hard, uh, their families who have offered them support, and the staff who have nurtured them during their time at Rose Bruford. Well done you. Um, while I was preparing this, I looked up Rose Elizabeth Bruford, and I was interested to learn that after she graduated, Rose then followed her parents' wishes never to work in the theatre. I hope following their graduations, the graduates will be sitting down with their parents ready to hear, heed any similar advice. <clears throat> while Rose Bruford sort of followed her parents' wishes, you might have noticed she didn't really not go into the theatre. She taught. According to the ever-reliable Wikipedia, she taught at 43 different schools between 1925 and 1949. And remember, for seven of those years, the country was at war. She built a drama course at the Royal Academy of Music. She taught mime at RADA, and she, principally, she taught teachers of drama. And that was before she founded the institution we're sitting in today. She was an evangelist. She preached theatre and spoken word and I sort of relate to that. Now, we all know that theatre can be an expensive, brash, and alienating experience. We've all got our theatre scars, and I could ask you to turn to your neighbour and share your theatre scars, but I've only got three minutes. But actually, when you break theatre down, it's got healing properties. Whether it's in an ancient tribe or a modern city, a special space is made where people meet. That's nice. A story is shared. There might be special light or special clothes. The people listen, and perhaps they laugh or cry or gasp together, and they support the storyteller, and then they leave and it's gone. For theatre is made from the attention given by people. Around the fire or at the National Theatre, it's the same. If the audience turn their backs on the stage, there is no theatre. It's not an art, it's an act of giving. It asks the best of us, teamwork, creativity, and care. Any good team will be a caring and supportive group. And from anyone watching a run-through or a performance, or indeed a short speech from a nervous man, it asks for attention, empathy, and presence. Now, I believe these values are what drove Rose's evangelism. And I believe they are much needed in our hectic, screen-centred lives today. 
And from my work, I know these values are appreciated by people of all ages and from all walks of life. I see people thrive in the supportive spaces that theatre offers. Children who have been excruciatingly shy, even selectively mute, telling and enacting their story because they want to contribute to the fun. Survivors of aerial bombing, both in Hiroshima and London, who want to contribute their experiences because they want the story never to be forgotten. And audiences leaning in to support an actor as they weave their tale because they want it to be magic. Theatre builds connections and community. I believe it nurtures us. So I hope you thrive in your theatre making, in the making of your art, and that through the pressures that come with it, you can enjoy and evangelise about the ideals it aspires to. Thank you. <laughs>